Cheers, and welcome back to another Coffee Talk. Today, I want to talk about a topic that I feel I have had numerous years online of history in, and that is the concept of romanticizing your life. I'm going to start off by saying, well, first, first and foremost, let me know what you're drinking down below. I made a half calf today with some vanilla oat milk and it's delicious. Sometimes I find Nespresso a little bold, a little strong for me, but the foam today, it's been a little chillier this last week, even though it's mid July. So warm coffee is exactly what I'm needing today. I'd like to take a quick second from today's episode to tell you guys about Lumi. Lumi was created by an OBGYN who wanted to create a whole body deodorant, specifically something you can use below the belt. The Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. You're going to be able to try the cream deodorant, the stick deodorant, and two other free products. A special offer was made for all Coffee Talk listeners that if you're a new customer, you can get $5 off the Lumi starter pack. All you have to do is use the code coffee at lumideodorant.com. That equates to 40% off a Lumi starter pack. And all you have to do is head to lumideodorant.com and use my code coffee at checkout. Whether you're searching for your latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. We're talking every inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece that you're searching for worthy of your collection eBay authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs, and as leaders in their fields, they're making sure that your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, treat yourself, get that piece that you've always wanted, and leave it up to the meticulous eyes of the eBay authenticator to make sure that watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made out of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world that can be full of fakes, it is time to get real. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. And I guess before I dive into the conversation and my perspective on it, I should pitch the, the question towards you guys about what are your thoughts or what is your opinion on the idea of romanticizing your life? I ask you this because I can see multiple perspectives and I'm going to do my best to explain both sides of the way that I look at this concept. I have had many years of vlogging my life, of creating content out of my life, which has been a blessing in terms of it being a job for me. However, I think that much like with anything in life, there is a light side to it and there can be a dark side to it. And so today I want to do my best to balance out both sides of that conversation while also discussing how to healthily romanticize your life. Because I think that most people that get drawn to this concept or most people that like the idea, it's not necessarily because anyone wants to live in any sort of delusion. In fact, I think it's actually a really nice notion to add a romantic spin on our lives because I mean, why not, right? If if we're going to get down to the deep core of things of why we exist, what's the meaning of life. And if we're going to hold space or if we can hold space for the, the possibility that there is no meaning, you give your life meaning, then why not romanticize your life? Why not make your life feel like a story? Mine, it is a story, right? If your life is a story and it very well is, why not make it a romantic story and not romantic in the sense of like turning your life into poetry. But it was this idea that everything down from the way that you make your coffee to the way that you get ready every morning to the clothes that you choose to you know the songs you listen to the way that you look at the sky or if you if you even look at the sky like what you pay attention to in a day what your thoughts are whether you like the poetry or not it, it's art like you are a walking form of art solely for the fact that you are energy in motion you are the universe in action and all of it from one perspective of it or another, depending on what genre you enjoy, is a story. And so when we get down to that aspect of romanticizing your life and being drawn to this notion, it usually tends to be people who are romantics at heart, helpless romantics. I'm definitely, I just said a helpless romantic, I meant hopeless romantic. I've always been a hopeless romantic and romanticizing things for me has always been a way to motivate myself to focus on the good or to 
make myself feel a positive spin to even things that I don't necessarily enjoy or want to do. Like I, for all of the astrology girlies out there, I am a Pisces through and through. So the mundane day-to-day -day tasks bore me to oblivion. And when I romanticize my life, if I can even romanticize the day-to-day -day things that I need to do that feel like they're weighing me down, it helps me get into things. It helps me get going on things. However, I also think that there needs to be like space in this conversation for talking about when romanticizing your life can go too far, when it can get into the territory of like being almost naive or out of touch, or I said I was going to have this conversation. So I'll try and loop some of it into today's chat too. This like very interesting trend that I feel I'm noticing online and let me know if you notice it or if you don't, or if you have a different point of view, I'd love to hear it of almost this like pathological narcissism online. And that's not to say that everybody that's online is a narcissist and it's not actually directed at anybody in particular. I participate in online social media content, so I definitely can see these traits even within myself. But at its very core, when you look at what social media is and what like influencing has become and actually what it's always been, specifically again in the eras that I feel like even my social media was at its peak, like it was very self-centered. Where it gets tricky is when that main character attitude towards life leads us into territories where we start to only focus on ourselves, only look at all situations through our own perspective with zero empathy for others, with zero ability to look outside of ourselves or even take accountability for like our own ripple effect in the world. If I throw something in the garbage, like that is me having a direct impact on the planet. Does that end up in the ocean? Does that end up in a landfill? Like how can I best make the choices in my life that don't just solely revolve around me and whether or not it's gonna affect me? I had this teacher that talked about garbage one time when we were learning about the environment and it's always stuck with me how he said out of sight, out of mind. And it's such a true point where, and I'm guilty of this too. A lot of the times, the things that we don't see, the things that don't directly affect us immediately and drastically, we don't really tend to think about or care about. And that is where I have problems with like this trending notion of romanticization. That is something that I grew up around is this level of like, not being able to pierce through the veil of somebody's of somebody's mind and train of thought being only solely focused on themselves to a point that it does harm to others. And when you take that and you multiply it and you take generations that are growing up with social media or that grew into social media, like my generation, possibly our generation, I'm a 94, I'm a millennial. So just at the bottom of millennials and like just above when we turned into Gen Z, it's been interesting to grow up with technology and grow up specifically watching social media come into play in the earlier or yeah, the earlier years of my teens later into my twenties, really hitting a peak. It's been super interesting watching how that is psychologically affecting us all as we continue to get further and further down the maze, the labyrinth of what is social media. It's like baked into the formula of existing online. There's a level of escapism that we use social media for and there's a level of escapism that comes from romanticizing our life because we are literally trying to romanticize the parts of our life that, that we don't want to have to exist in that are uncomfortable. I think it's just, just like with most things, I think it's about finding that balance. I'd like to take a quick second from today's episode to tell you guys about Lumi. If you're looking to smell good and not just under your arms, but your pits, your legs, your everything in between, Lumi is going to be your go-to. I've talked about Lumi a couple times and it's because this has been such a summer staple for me and is definitely going to continue to be a staple for me moving into the fall time. I have the Lumi stick deodorant and the cream deodorant along with the deodorant wipes that are super easy to throw into your bag on the go or your satchel. I prefer the stick deodorant when exercising solely because I just like the way that it feels. I feel like it's smooth, it's clean, and the smell is orange citrus, which always gives me a little bit of a boost. And then I love the Lumi whole body deodorant cream 
for everything in between day to day. This one is in lavender sage, so this is more of my daily scent. It's something that makes me feel really calm, really at ease, but I also like that it's a cream and that I can use it pretty much anywhere. Lumi was created by an OBGYN who wanted to create a whole body deodorant, specifically something you can use below the belt. And it's acidified formula is proven to control odor for up to 72 hours all over your body. And it's acidified formula is proven to control bacteria causing odor all over your body for 72 hours. It's also pH safe. And on top of that, it's aluminum free, it's paraben free, it's baking soda free, and it smells really good. So as you're winding down your summer, if you're looking for a new scent to signify the shift in seasons moving into fall, then definitely check out Lumi. The Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. You're going to be able to try the cream deodorant, the stick deodorant, and two other free products. You could choose the deodorant wipes that I was just speaking of that are easy to throw in your bag. There's also a mini body wash. A special offer was made for all Coffee Talk listeners that if you're a new customer, you can get $5 off the Lumi starter pack. All you have to do is use the code coffee at lumideodorant.com. That equates to 40% off a Lumi starter pack. And all you have to do is head to lumideodorant.com and use my code coffee at checkout. Needless to say, I just feel it's important to, while romanticizing our lives and romanticizing our stories and living to the highest potential that we feel we are capable of or we know we are capable of, like whether you believe in your higher self or you just know that if you work hard or you work smart, sorry, let me rephrase that. I don't wanna feed into the hustle culture, but like if you work smart or you do the things that you know you're supposed to do, that you could live this grand life, that live this very happy, very content life with yourself. I just think that it's also gotta be balanced with staying grounded in reality and also holding the two truths that you are an individual cut from the vibrational cloth of the universe. You are energy packaged into one body connected to the tapestry of the energy of our planet, of our solar system, of our universe. At the same time, we all play a role on the planet and everything we do, whether we like to acknowledge it or not, does have an effect on others from what we throw in the garbage to what we choose to spend our money on to what we choose to spend our attention or our energy or our time on and who we choose to spend time around and all of these things do ripple out into the energetic web into the like cause and effect on the planet so holding that in the truth of also you are an individual and you are allowed to focus on your own life is a tricky balance but let's let's unpack it a little bit just using the coined term of romanticizing your life, like that's something that I've, I'd only really heard the last few years, but I feel like it is something that mentally I have done for a couple years now. When I think back to some of the vlogs that I've posted over the years, it definitely feels like a more romantic, a more prettier version of what my reality really was. And again, Catch 22, I think there can be positives to that. I think there are reasons that make sense for that, but then I also, Again, I know what my life was actually like behind the camera. So while it can be motivating and it can be aspirational and it can be inspirational for both myself and for anybody that might have watched even to this day, although my vlogs today, I do try to be a little bit more real while still being clever with edits so that it's fun and entertaining to watch and relatable. That's the point. I feel like I'm a little bit more real about my life today and a little bit more relatable. And on the other side of it, I think that when we romanticize things too far, that's where we lose touch with reality or we can lose touch with reality and people will see things. And this is the responsibility aspect that I think comes into play when you are openly sharing and you become somebody that like people look to or follow, which is not even really today's conversation, but I think it's, a, it's important to note because I also watch people and I also do this where I assume what I'm seeing is what their life is. And that's definitely not the case. Like you're getting eight minutes out of like a full week and that can leave people feeling less than or inadequate or like they have all of these things they have to do or these boring things or like they go through these horrible things or these hardships or these stressors that when you watch certain content online or when you romanticize your life or you watch a movie or you read a book, I mean, have you ever read a book where someone's like, all right, I gotta take a break and go use the bathroom and like actually use the bathroom? No, because nobody wants to read about that. Nobody wants to see that in a vlog. Nobody wants to watch that part of the movie. Yes, highlight the simple pleasures of your life, first and foremost. Two, take the things that you don't really enjoy doing and make them enjoyable. 
down to, again, kind of using some of the examples we've already talked about that are not fun. I mean, again, nobody likes to talk about going to the bathroom or taking out the garbage, but when you make part of those things in your life enjoyable in the smallest ways, and one of the easiest ways is we are humans that are very in tune with the senses from what we see to what we hear to what we smell to what we taste to what we feel like when you create an atmosphere in your bathroom that is really enjoyable or when you take your routine for cleaning and you put on music that you really enjoy and you put your hair up and you make yourself a coffee the whole house starts to smell like coffee you light a candle your laundry starts to fill in the sense of the home and like those things are by tuning and tapping into those senses and by really relishing in them and enjoying them for what they are in the present moment, it, it can be very grounding and it can be very romantic and it can be very motivating. And that's the trick, like that's what we wanna hack into. It's engaging in the things that keep us feeling those bright, happy feelings and not to override or avoid or suppress the feelings that we don't want to feel as human beings that again are part of our human experience from jealousy to anger to bitterness to boredom like these are feelings that whether we like it or not are built in again built into the batter of existing as a human being but it's more so to keep a highlight on the things that make us feel more romantic make us feel more at peace make us feel more enjoyed or happy or whatever it is and that could come down to like with the books you read the movies that you watch the shows that you watch like have you ever fallen down a wormhole where you get stuck watching things that are like kind of negative so an example of this is sometimes i'll fall down wormholes where I just like having background noise on sometimes and I know where I'm at mentally based on what I choose as my background noise. If I choose music as my background noise, I'm usually in a good place. When I'm choosing my background noise to be like commentary drama videos, that's where I'm like, hmm, what's going on? Like, why do I want to escape or feel a sense of like superiority by subtly judging things in the background while I do my day to day? And again, that's coming from a place of like honesty, but also non-judgment because when I do get into those places, usually it's because there's something going on in my life that I just feel shit about. And if I can just put on a little background noise of somebody that's doing much, much worse than me, I feel a little bit better. And yeah, that's an ugly thing to admit, but I'm human. Watching a drama video is not only me subtly judging somebody else, whether I'm pretending that I'm just barely listening or not, but it's also doing harm to myself because everything that we do, at least in my belief and my philosophy for life, like everything that we do to others, everything that we get annoyed by in others or judge upon others is all a really deep seated, rooted, mirrored reflection for the ways that we judge ourselves, like how harsh we are to other people is how harsh we are to ourselves. And so that's how I know. That's always how I know when I'm in a weird place or when I'm not doing so well with my own relationship to myself, because I'll know based on how hard I'm judging other people or what's bothering me about other people. Usually those are things that I'm neglecting about myself or don't want to hold space for with myself. And that's not very romantic. So coming back to bringing some sense of romanticization into that or some life poetry into that, even just holding space for that truth, like. If this was a movie, this is where the character would be like, oh, and then write my wrongs, put on some music instead, or even just give a little bit of grace that whatever that person has a drama video about, it's never to justify people that do terrible things, but just to be like, oh, they're human. So am I. We all make mistakes. It's a shitty mistake, but if I'm going to judge their mistakes, then I have to put my mistakes out on display and let someone else judge mine as well. Whether you're searching for your latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. We're talking every inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece that you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs, and as leaders in their fields, they're making sure that your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead. Treat yourself, get that piece that you've always wanted, and leave it up to the meticulous eyes of the eBay authenticator to make sure that watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made out of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world that can be full of fakes, it is time to get real. With eBay authenticity guarantee, everyone deserves real. 
Visit ebay.com for terms. When we recognize that life has its ups and its downs, when we recognize that life can be romantic and it can also be really ugly, when we recognize that there are certain things we have control over and then certain things that we don't, it's using the power of your mind and your focus to highlight the things, the simple things, the little pleasures in your life, that is where healthy romanticization comes from. It can be very heavily rooted in awareness and being present and being rooted and grounded in your body in the moment. It can also come to you from your imagination. I mean, you're dreaming up a storyline and then living it out. And there's literally nothing wrong with that. Again, I feel like there's, we could poke a lot of holes in it, but what, why? Like if life potentially really has no meaning, why can't you dream up a storyline and live it out? If people aren't allowing themselves to be more imaginative, to be more creative with their lives or to focus or, or feel good about the simple pleasures in their life, they're not gonna want other people to do it either. And it's not personal. It's not that that person is against you. It's more so that Again, part of just the human existence and the human condition is that when we feel a certain way, we don't want other people to feel better because that makes us feel worse. And that's an ugly trait of human nature, but it is a trait of human nature. And I think it's important to mention too that not every moment or situation in our lives should be romanticized. This is coming again from my experience. If I could go back in time and sit down with preteen me or sit down with teenage me or even early 20s me and tell myself to stop romanticizing things that are just genuinely unhealthy, I, I would do it in a heartbeat. I mean, again, I wouldn't have learned my lessons if I hadn't gone through it, but from like mental health issues, that feeling like almost feeling good in my suffering all the way to other aspects of my health that were not good. And those things shouldn't be romanticized. We shouldn't be romanticizing any kind of suffering, anything that is unhealthy, anything that again does harm to ourselves or others should not be romanticized. So this perspective, this mental tool that we can take into gaining motivation for our lives and creating more beautiful life for ourselves, it should only be used. And I hope that this is like, I hope that this isn't something I should have to say, but I, I do feel like I wanna say it because it's important given my own experience in history. And if anybody out there is romanticizing anything that you know deep in your core isn't good for you, like you should only use this tool for things that you know are gonna better your life in some way. The brain is such a tricky player in the game where sometimes our brain can somehow justify that doing the unhealthy thing will better our lives in some way. Maybe we'll get attention or maybe we'll fit a certain criteria or beauty standard in the world. But you're playing with energy all the time, okay? Different phrases can be used to describe what I'm talking about here, but I'm gonna call it energy today. Do you wanna play with good magic or bad magic? I think when we romanticize things that we know are not healthy for us, we're playing with dark magic. And if you believe in magnetism, if you believe in manifestation, if you believe in the basic laws of physics that like attracts like, when you play with dark magic, you're gonna call forth more darkness to your life. So don't play with dark magic. Romanticize the things that are good for you. Romanticize the things that are light, that are wholesome, that are bright in your life, that are healthy for you. And then you'll attract more of those things towards you. It's such a weird mental conundrum to try and rationalize like romanticizing your life online because obviously, you know, people want to see realness and relatability, but people also want to see aesthetic and they want to see something nice and they want to see a, like a package that makes you feel something, right? People want to feel something and most, for the most part, people want to feel good. So when you post things that make people feel good or make people feel inspired or make people feel motivated, that's going to draw more people in. However, when you get lost in it, when it becomes all about curating your life, to look a certain way so that you fit a certain aesthetic or like you fit a certain ideal or you fit a certain societal norm or standard, it starts getting into this weird territory where people stop caring about anything else. People get so lost in their own story about who they are or you know the life that they're projecting online that it becomes, it becomes like, it, it's to me, it's super interesting to dissect and witness. Again, this comes back to like getting lost into some drama videos because 
to see some actions that people that end up getting huge online or that famous pop stars or whatever it is that people end up taking where you're just like, how do you not have the self-awareness to know that that is wrong? That is coming from a place of perhaps maybe romanticizing, but also it's, it's, it's a level of self-centeredness that we can get to when we get too lost in the story of our, of ourselves, of our lives, right? That's why I feel it is important, even when romanticizing your life, that maybe we should include in the conversation of romanticization, romanticize our own ripple effects on the planet. Personally, in my brain, I like to think of myself as just like a beam of energy, right? And when I do something, like if I were to hit a little puddle and ripples were to go out and those ripples are hitting other beams of energy, I would want those ripple effects to leave a, an uplifting effect on the beams that I hit, the people that I hit, the people directly in my life, the people that tune in online, whatever it is. If I'm only thinking about myself, I don't give a shit about what those ripples do. I just want to beam as bright as possible. And then that creates this like vacuum of like attention and focus and choice and even like it gets down into morals, empathy, values, perspective on the planet. It gets to the core of narcissism, of not being able to see outside of yourself, outside of your story, outside of how like you, you only do things that will directly benefit you or affect you or make you feel good about yourself or just make you feel good and doesn't matter who gets affected or hurt in the process. So we should romanticize the ripple effect that we have on the planet. We should be conscious of even when we're living out our stories, our individual stories about how those stories interact and play into other people's stories. Like, yes, you are the main character of your life, but you were also a side character and a background character in every other life that you exist in or pass by. Every person you see from the person walking down the street to the person driving behind you in the car to someone else that is a view count on today's podcast episode or video to literally everyone is living their own main character story. And so while yes, yours is valid, yours exists, yours is worth living in the most beautiful romantic way possible. I just think it's important to stay aware that we also play roles in other people's stories. Even the ones that we're not even cognitive of, even the ones that we aren't even fully aware of. Like if anybody used to be a One Tree Hill fan, there was an episode where there was a quote, something along the lines, I'm probably gonna butcher it, about how do you ever notice the people in the background of your photos out in public and then wonder how many background photos you're in that you just never know like there's a picture somewhere on someone's wall or on someone's phone that you're in the background of and you know nothing about them that's very much the same way of the way that we live our lives energetically like it's my life yes but it's also our life it's my story yes but it's also our story as people that are alive on the planet at the same time and that have the same earthly history that we've come from, have the same question mark of a future that we're heading towards and the way that we treat each other as we go about our stories is important. It does matter. Let's tie it up with a personal exercise that you can actually do to start creating a habit out of romanticizing your life if this is not something that you naturally do and you wanna know how. I have something for you. You can do this in so many ways. Again, it's down to just like, there's there's literally, you could do nothing. You could just sit right now, if you're drinking a coffee, pause the episode, look around you, pretend you're, you can hear like background music, take a gentle sip of your drink, taste it, taste it fully. Be fully in your thoughts, be fully in your body. That is romanticizing your life. That is romanticizing the moment. However, if you do want some more actionable items, there's something that you can start to do every day that will create a habit out of romanticizing your life. Creating a highlight every single day. You can do this at the start of your day, you can do this at the end of your day, you can use this tool however you like to. If you were to use this at the end of the day, before going to bed, you would think to yourself, you would say out loud or you would write down what your highlight of the day was. It can be something small, it can be something big, it could be more than one highlight if you've got multiple things coming to mind, but it's just, again, every day thinking of one thing, romanticizing one thing that happened to you that day. I cannot wait to have my morning coffee. I cannot wait to go for a walk in nature today. I am so happy that I have my dog. I am so happy for my home or for where I live or for another sunny day or for the breath I'm taking or the 
beat that my heart is making without me even having to think about it or my health or whatever it is. Like it can be the book you're reading. It can be something you're excited about, something you can't wait for, something that you're grateful for that is a highlight for you as you go into your day. Then no matter what day you had, you can always pull out something that is romantic about the day or the life that you're living. It sounds simple and that's because it is and it's meant to be simple because it makes it easy to do which makes it easy to you know actually stick to and then when you actually stick to it the more you do this each day you do this it will start to shift your perspective you'll start to look at life more romantically you'll start to realize and see the poetry and the art in your life everything is going to happen the way it's going to happen but two people can look at the exact same thing. Two people can watch the exact same movie and have totally different perspectives on it. So when you do things like this every day and it does shift your perspective, you might not live any different of a life, but the way you feel about your life will change. And the way you feel about your life is important because it'll change how you move through the world. It'll change whether or not you feel you have a life well lived or a day well lived or you don't. So it's worth doing. So romanticize your life do it enjoy it and if you have any thoughts on today's topic i would love to hear it come on over to youtube if you aren't here already and leave me your thoughts on this concept below i know that it has become like a trend online i think again it's something that's obviously been around for long even before social media existed but specifically now that social media is a thing i think we see a lot of people romanticizing their lives myself included and it can be really heartwarming it can be really motivating it can also again be really tricky and get really sticky when it comes to like like it's balancing that line of authenticity versus aspiration right so i think it's an interesting concept i think that it makes sense that it's trending and it also is super intriguing to me just to see like the layer of when it goes too far or it gets too deep or people get too self-centered so yeah, those are my thoughts on it and I would love to hear yours. Also, let me know what you're drinking or what you were doing in the comment section down below. And as per usual, it would mean the world to me if you aren't subscribed already to subscribe over to Kaelin's Coffee Talk and Flows on YouTube. Or if you're listening to the podcast, again, follow along or rate the podcast. It does me a heap of good as a content creator myself. And without further ado, I will chat with all of you guys in our next coffee talk. I'm currently taking a little bit of a break from social media, so I'm not really active anywhere at the moment, but I will leave all of my socials in the description bar as well if you would like to come see the romanticized version of my life, the highlight reel, if you will, of my life. Wishing you all a very cozy, warm, romantic day, and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye, everyone.